Ladies and gentlemen, good day and welcome to the Pretty Industries Limited Q4 and FY24 earnings conference call hosted by Ventura Securities Limited. As a reminder, all participant lines will be in the listen only mode and there will be an opportunity for you to ask questions after the presentation concludes. Should you need assistance during the conference call, please signal an operator by pressing star and then zero on your touchstone phone. Please note that this conference is being recorded. I would now like to hand the conference over to Tushar from Ventura Securities Limited. Thank you and over to you, Tushar. Thank you. Good day, ladies and gentlemen. On behalf of Ventura Securities Limited, I welcome you all to Pretty Industries Limited Q4 and FI24 earnings conference call. The company is today represented by Mr. Shilton Musa, Chairman and Managing Director, and Mr. Satish Sisodia, Chief Financial Officer. I would now like to hand over the call to the Managing Director of the company, Mr. Shilton Mehta, for his opening remarks. Thank you, and over to you, sir. Good evening, everyone, and welcome to the earnings conference call of Priti Industries India Limited for the fourth quarter of the financial year 2024 and financial year ending 2024. In Q4, financial year 24, total sales volume were 17,554 metric tons as against 15,000 83 metric tons in Q4 of financial year 23, which grew at around 16% on year-on-year basis. Also, on segmental front, in Q4 24, the company registered a growth of 75% in volume in the building product business compared to Q4 of financial year 23. I am very happy to inform you that the company has achieved a strong revenue growth for the full year with significant turnaround in margins and profitability versus last year. During financial year 24, the company registered an overall growth of 28% and 18% in volume and value respectively. On a year-on-year basis, with total sales volume of 75,655 metric tons against a sales volume of 59,148 metric tons. Sales volume for the agriculture segment grew by 16%, while industrial solution grew by 59%, and building product by 75% year on year. I will hand over the call to our CFO, Mr. Rajesh Sisodia, to give you the financial highlights. Thank you very much, sir. Very good evening, everyone. Let me take you through the financial performance of our company on a consolidated basis. The Q4 2024 revenue is around 195 odd crores, which indicates a growth of 3% on YOY basis, with one-term growth of 28% and price down effect of 7.5%. The EBITDA stood at around 14 crores with an EBITDA margin of 7% which the company has been able to show cars in last three quarters. There is a dip by 134 basis points on a YOY basis. Net profit was reported at around rupees 4 crores in Q4 2024 and a part of that margin stood at 1.85%. The revenue for financial year 2024 is around 867 crores which grew 18% year-on-year basis. EBITDA is around INR 60 crores with an annual EBITDA margin of 6.87%. And net profit of your company was around INR 22 crores. The tax margin on annual basis stood at 2.53%. Regarding the segment-wise revenue for financial year 2024, agriculture, industrial solutions, and building products contributed 62%, 26%, and 12% respectively. Thank you. I would like to open the floor for questions, if any, on the results. Thank you, sir. 
ladies and gentlemen we will now begin the question and answer session if you have any questions please press star and 1 on your telephone keypad if you would like to withdraw your request you may do so by pressing star and 1 again our first question comes from rahul jain from credence wealth please go ahead sir hello am i audible yes sir yeah good evening uh, madam sir and good evening rajesh sir so a uh, couple of questions uh, sir on the overall demand scenario since uh, we are going into the next year and the quarter one happens to be our best quarter uh, with regards to more towards agri part so how are we looking at the overall situation on the ground in terms of demand we have already crossed about one month and some more days so till now how has been the demand uh, from the agri side and also the other segments that is my first question uh the demand scenario looks to be fairly good because prices are affordable and we are seeing good traction on the top line mm -hmm. so are we in for a record quarter in terms of revenues yes it looks to be a good quarter agriculture demand is quite robust okay and sir in terms of the margins part <coughs> sir even uh, prior to say covid also uh, when you know we were recording around 400 450 crores of sales or 500 crores of sales our ebitda margins have been in the range of around 7.5% 7 to 7.5% leaving aside one or two years where probably we gained on inventory or we lost on inventory today our revenues are almost about 860 crores uh, the operating leverage doesn't seem to be kicking in and this is on based on my understanding on the numbers what i can read is the other expenses have gone up sharply the last six quarters the average run rate of expenses on the other side the other expenses are in the range of 19 20 crores which was in previous one and a half to two years was in the range of 11 to 12 crores so basically sir 11 to 12 crores has gone up to 19 20 crores in last six quarters every quarter we are spending around 19 to 20 crores So, sir, here the additional around eight nine crores. If you could share some details, where is being this spent majorly? To get a sense, ki whether you know these expenses can result in some kind of benefits going ahead. You see, as I have told you earlier, developing building material is taking lot of efforts in terms of um, footwork as well as detail, detail efforts and dealer development initiatives. so as we are trying to expand in building material initially our expenses will continue to be little higher and as the volume ramps up um, we will be able to distribute these expenses on a larger sales base so then it is only then you may see that our expenses uh, per unit of sales will be within a range and then our margins should look up So, मोटा मोटा सर आर वी डन विद द अदर एक्सपेंसेस और द आर वी डन विद द डेवलपमेंट एंड प्रमोशनल एंड मार्केटिंग एक्सपेंसेस फॉर बिल्डिंग प्रोडक्ट्स फ्रॉम हियर ऑन द ग्रोथ इन दैट एक्सपेंसेस विल नॉट बी लार्ज इनफ फॉर इट टू बी वेरी मिनिमल इट विल नॉट बी इट विल सडनली प्रोपोर्शनेटली कम डाउन बिकॉज एज द मार्केट मैच्योर एज द सेल्स ग्रो फॉर एवरी टेरिटरी the per unit expenses would certainly show a better um, margin for the performance of company so last question sir on the capex side our gross block is up and plus we have a cwip uh, also in the balance sheet so with regards to the capex if you could share more details and also the building products i understand lot of this is going towards building products uh, Uh, the expansions of the FTUs. So till date, whatever capacity we have built in the building product division, at this peak capacity relation, what kind of revenue can be generated from the building products segment? You see, building product, as you would know, this year we have shown a total sales um, which is um, 
grown by almost like in terms of tonnage about 79-80% to about uh, to, um, how much is it? 75% growth. 75% growth. So obviously this all addition of range and product uh, quantities, uh, the in initial investments have to be high. So this is where most of our expenses are in developing range, developing capacities, appropriate requirements of market uh, for CPVC, for UPVC, for fittings, for pipes. So we are now almost ready up to a level where uh, we will be able to expand our market because we have a larger range to take that. Yes, sir, just to clarify, this existing capacity which we have already built till date, that can at peak utilization, what can give us what kind of revenues in this segment? We have made capacity to add here. On that, 170 crores as a revenue. We are at about 100 and hot, uh, 104 crores today, last year. Mm -hmm. But the capacity here is, uh, we can see if all the sizes are properly, you know, utilized. We can easily expand our sales from 1.5 to 1.6 time of current sales. Sure. Thank you, sir. I have some more questions. I'll come back. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Our next question comes from the line of Ankit Gupta from Bamboo Capital. Please go ahead, sir. So uh, on the building product side, the kind of efforts we are making last year and despite having a low base of, you know, less than 5,000 metric ton sales in FY23, uh, our, our building product sales in volume terms has grown by 62% last year. And, you know, if we look at the quarterly, you know, performance over the past uh, two, three, past three quarters, past three, four quarters, a building product sales has been around 700 tons, you know, per quarter, and it has remained in that range for almost, you know, three quarters now. So, how do you? What has been the reason for you know, the sales to be, uh, you know, stuck in that range for past uh, three quarters? And how do you see the growth in the building product segment for F525? You see, our growth in terms of tonnage in Q4 to Q4 is about 75%. And if you compare our sales in Q3 to Q4 in building materials, it is about 23% growth, quarter on quarter. I just wanted to clarify, you know, this, uh, uh, this, uh, the number Q1 in the presentation for the building product sales is around 1674 compared to 1237 metric ton last year. Yes, our sales in Q4 is about 1,149 uh, metric tons against the uh, last quarter was 1753, so it's about 23% growth. Okay, maybe some error is there in that presentation. Yeah. Yeah, sir. So, you know, uh, how do you see the growth for next year and uh, how do you see the scale up? Right, so hopeful to sustain this. Okay, so even on the base of let's say 100 yes, crores, yes. it's all. Rather going forward, able to do better as our range is now available, our uh, marketing abilities have improved. So we, we are quite uh, confident that we should be able to maintain the process. Sure, sure. So, uh, on the margin front, you know, uh, like uh, in this quarter, has there been any inventory loss that we have incurred because our realizations have come down? Any inventory loss? But yes, our expenses have grown because of our efforts on the marketing side. And mm -hmm. as our range has come up now, the larger mm -hmm. uh, portfolio of two higher uh, diameters, we have to put in a lot of effort in terms of putting products on the shelf everywhere. Sure. In fact, let's say, let's say, you know, the prices for uh, the PVC stay at the current levels and, you know, we see a significant ramp up in the building products that we are in the charging for FY25. How do you see the margins for the company planning out for FY25? You know, last year we reported uh, close to 7%, 6.86%, 7% uh, EBITDA margin. For next year, how do you see the margins shipping out? 
the margins will certainly improve because building product is a major area where we are putting in investments and where we are, um, uh, I mean, seeing the traction quarter on quarter. Once the cost, volume of building products low, our uh, expenses will be distributed in a higher base, and that's where the margins will improve. Okay, so when it like you know we are earlier targeting to reach double digit early double digit kind of margins, uh, uh, you know given the scale of that we were expecting. We are trying our best to hit a number which is uh, towards uh, double digit. Let's hope that quarter to quarter we are able to demonstrate it. So okay, okay, okay. Thank you, Mr. Thank you, sir. Our next question comes from the line of Viraj Mehta from DVD Capital. Please go ahead, sir. So my first question is regarding our agri markets. On an aggregate level, uh, in the districts that we are present in Maharashtra, uh, what is at some point two years back you used to say that wherever we are present in Maharashtra, we have ten percent market share. What will be our market share today uh, in Maharashtra? We are around the similar, uh, similar level. We, I mean, exact uh, district by district may vary a bit, but on average, we will be around eight to ten percent market share in different areas. And so, my second question is uh, aspirationally, sir. If I look at some of our larger players, uh, even in BP uh, or in agri business, uh, they grow. On like very large base of few thousand crore revenue, eight ten thousand crore revenue, and even in fighting five six thousand crore revenue, their aspiration and they actually grow much faster than us even on that base on volume terms. What is it with such penetration? I mean, we basically are investing also, we are increasing penetration also, but somehow that doesn't translate into numbers, right? I mean, what is it that we are missing? So it's a very important question which we as management have been reviewing and internalizing. But you see, unless you go multi locations, um, the volume growth will have to be within a range of what uh, we are achieving. But once we, uh, because India is a very large territory, transporting pipes beyond a limit is always a cost which is a challenge. Building material is somewhere where costs are affordable. So as our building material business will grow, we'll be able to reach out to larger, bigger, distant territories, and that's where we may see more traction in coming uh, days. Because building products um, are comparatively of a higher margin business as compared to agriculture business. Sure, sir. And so a few years back, we used to talk about our new plant in South India, in Karnataka, with now reaching 850, 900 crore top line. Uh, where are we in terms of uh, uh, diversifying locationally and also providing us easier access to South India market? Yes, basically uh, debating within our team to do it. Actually, the um, fire incident here, uh, which we had in a major setback, and that's why we, our plans and our supplies in during period had uh, impacted our business plans. But we are again uh, rebuilding all these our initial plans. Okay, sir. Best of luck. Thank you, sir. Our next question comes from the line of Thwanil Desai from Turtle Capital. Please go ahead, sir. Uh, hi. Good afternoon, sir. Uh, so my first question is, uh, you know, FY23, uh, Q1 was on a very low base, so uh, you know, because of the fire incident. So if you adjust for that, uh, you know, there is hardly any growth compared to FY22, uh, because FY23 first quarter base was low on the agri side of it. So far, uh, again, coming back to the earlier participants' question, we are getting into so many geographies. We are trying to get higher market share, but every segment, in spite of lower PVC price, seems to be somehow, uh, you know, not going beyond single-digit volume growth. So, so what is it? So, is it that the, we need to go to the double-digit kind of a growth? We need to have another plant. Without that, we can't 
you have to double digit volume growth is that a right assumption to make uh, can you uh, talk a bit more about that see we had a fire almost about 2 years back the last year data to this year is not uh, based on fire last year was a clear operational year so based on that quarter to on quarter there is a growth in agriculture uh, which is about 9 uh, 18 19% of this year and agriculture side is about 16% 16% uh, growth on the you know, say annual basis quarter on quarter is about 14% so the agriculture side staying here within a limited geography from one location will always be a constant we will have to go multi location then only we can expand agriculture faster uh, because any area to have a market share beyond a reasonable 45 50 55% is very difficult to uh, grab so we are certainly planning for a multi location which we will um, i mean once our plans are chosen we can take a poll on that okay so my uh, i think uh, again uh, correct me if i'm wrong but i think the fire took place in uh, may or april or may of 2022 which is first quarter of fy23 then that uh, right understanding right first quarter was impacted ha, but so, so but if i adjust for the entire year uh, and because the first quarter of fy23 was a very low base right so uh, because we lost some business because of the fire so so the actual volume growth on a normalized basis is much lower than what it look isn't it the right way to look at it uh, i would say to partially what you are saying has a merit but we are seeing traction quarter on quarter if we see um, uh, we will be able to uh, see that unless and until we go multi location a growth beyond a point from a single location will be always a challenge got it and uh, sir i think we have been talking about uh, this second plant or multi location strategy for some time and for various reason uh, you know we have not yet decided on, on that but what are the key parameters as a management you look for to go for this multi location i think one thing we talked about repeatedly in earlier calls was that you need to have a critical volume in a geography uh, to give the base load demand for that plant so so i'm saying what are the decision point which which will come in the near future or medium future medium term to which will help you take that decision you see we are looking for a critical volume and we were towards that when our plant fire uh, disrupted our supplies so we could not continue the momentum which we had got at that point in time so we have been once again realigned that momentum and i we are seeing improvement certainly but once you had reached there and then there was a breakage so once again you have to build that um, a territory which we are been working towards so now we are hopeful that we should be able to show significant improvement towards these uh, territories where we want to achieve critical volumes okay got it and uh, sir you have been saying that we are investing on the building product side to scale up the business and hence the margin Uh, you know, it's likely you have to because of that. So, is it fair to assume that on a building product stand alone, uh, let's say its normalized margin is 12, 13, 15 percent, because we are investing at the current scale, which may be a sub-scale business as of now, our margins are lower than what it should be, let's say 14, 15 percent. Is that a right way to look at it? Yes, because our expenses are much higher for unit sales. Okay. even prices are um, top uh, are reasonable with uh, price the expenses per unit are much higher that's why our margins shrink okay so you think when we reach that 170 180 crore we should be able to get to at least you know 12 13 percent kind of a margin on a building product basis or you need much higher scale to get to that number no people are having better margins than 12 13% but we internally look at in a 12% margin once we reach that number on building material okay, okay. Uh, and the last question so you said that with the capex that uh, you know that we have done and we are currently in wip we can do 170 180 crore kind of number on the building product side now uh, as we have aggressive growth plans on the building product and on 100 105 crore base 
you know, if we go 50, 60 percent, we will again be kind of running out of capacity to that extent. So, do uh, we continue to do further capex, uh, or, you know, on the building product side? Uh, you know, what are your thoughts on that? It will all depend the progression of sales. But yes, we are ready as an organization if there is a situation where we feel there is a justified reason for us to increase uh, our capex allocation, we will not hesitate from that. And last, just a clarification, I think uh, in your presentation, the the volume or tonnage for building products is 1674, which I think you mentioned is around 2100 tons, right? Is that, uh, did I hear you correctly? Yeah, 2149 is the number. 2149, okay. Yeah. Oh, oh, great, thank you. Uh, that is for my time. Thank you, sir. Our next question is from the line of Miraj Shah from Arihant Capital. Please go ahead, sir. Thank you for the opportunity, sir. Um, good afternoon. I just have uh, a couple of questions. So first is uh, a clarification. In the start of the call, and to answer to one of the questions, you had mentioned that uh, at peak uh, utilization, you can do 170 crores. Uh, was this for uh, the agricultural segment? Uh, for, for which segment was this for? I didn't try to catch that. Building, building material. Building material. Okay, yeah. understood. Uh, and post that you said uh, 1.5 to 1.6 times of current. So that is building materials only because you're doing 99 crores of top line currently in that segment. Building material only. We have done 104 uh, crores this year. Understood. Okay. So uh, the next question is that in in our presentation, I can see that uh, our uh, capacity for building material building materials is close to 6,600 tons, uh, and this year we did a top line of 6,700 tons. Now we in our uh, uh, thought process going ahead, we're saying that uh, the, with the increase of volumes in building materials, we'll be able to help have better margins and. Uh, better scale as well. So uh, you've also mentioned about uh, 20 crore capex that you've done. So what is the current uh, actual capacity of building materials that is available now? So we are almost like uh, doing, uh, last year we have done 7,000, um, 6,000. 6,580 tons. And we can easily scale it up uh, one and a half times, so it will be about nine to ten thousand tons. So, so we have a capacity of nine thousand tons because in the presentation is just sixty six hundred tons. No, sixty six hundred. Capitalization is still in, you know, uh, has been done. So it's a whole number. Yeah, so it's about almost nine thousand tons that we can easily do. The capacity already installed. Okay, so our current capacity is 9,000 tons, and uh, <clears throat> this includes the capex of 20 crores that is mentioned, right? So, in 20 right. crores, you've added 2,300 tons right. for building materials. Right. And, and so, I just want to un have some clarity uh, the point that you're mentioning to go multi location. So, what is the progress on that part? Have you finalized any location or have you started any plant in any location? If you can just throw some light. And I mean, still our plan starts to be crystallized, you know. We are looking at a critical mass which we are going towards. Actually, we had planned it, but because of disruptions year before last, our plans had, uh, uh, I mean, had to, to be revisited, which we are in the process. Understood. Okay, and sir, can you also mention the order book that you have currently? You see, in agriculture, every day there is a continuous order in flow. Because we are dealers, so there is always uh, continuous order and flow and supplies. There may be shortage in some sizes, there may be some available stock, but overall in few days, everything gets supplied. Understood, okay. And sir, uh, I, I missed one point that you mentioned regarding guidance. For FY25, can you just repeat what, what had you mentioned? I believe you said something about double-digit margins. Uh, if you can just repeat. I was asked that in building material, Normally, people have a much higher margin. So, in building material, where do you aspire to have a margin once you achieve your capacities above 160, 170 crores? There, I said we are aspiring to touch double digits in building material itself. 
Understood. Okay, okay. Sir, any uh, guidance on the top line for FI 25-26? So, we certainly hope to uh, grow at uh, 20% around in terms of top, top line. Okay, perfect. Thank you so much for your time, sir, and all the best for the future. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Our next question comes from the line of Sakit Kapoor from Kapoor & Co. Please go ahead, sir. Yeah. Namaskar, sir. And, uh, sir, firstly, uh, if you could just uh, give an, a number of how much have we uh, spent on this building material capacity as on date and what portion is left in the uh, working progress, capital working progress? Uh, really, uh, how much is the total value? We have spent 40 crores. Total 40 crores we have spent. And Kormon both were there. That's it. About 40 crores is our total uh, uh, investment in capex so far. And okay. As on date, we have spent only 40 crores on the total capacity of 6,600 metric right. that we have built. Okay. And we also have certain uh, working process. Uh, which will be getting um, capitalized in coming uh, months. Yes. What is that amount, sir? What will get About 15, 20 crores put together. Okay. So in totality, it, it's around 75, yes. 65, 70 crores. 60 crores. crores. See, it's, what happens that when you go for an expansion, you are also uh, balancing other equipment. Okay. Uh, come again, sir. Hello. There are balancing requirements, right, sir. which are also uh, part of the expansion. So that is where, like in the terms of infrastructure, in terms of electricals, in terms of everything, to so put together, we are putting that much upon it. And and our peak uh, turnover from this building material ca will be around 180 crore. Yes. And sir, just for my understanding, I'm new to the company. What do this building material constitute, and where are its application? We are in the in the PVC special segment, PVC pipe segment. So, when you are selling building materials, what are you alluding to, sir? You see, in any house, if you look or any building, you will see there is a requirement for transportation of water, for sewerage, for drainage, for Ducting, these are all part of building material. Plumbing pipes, uh, sewerage pipes, water drainage, all pipes and, and fittings. All pipes and fittings are clubbed as building material. Yes, yes, yes. And sir, here we are uh, catering to B2B or B2C also? We are generally in a B2C segment so far. And now since we, I mean, we may be getting registrations with various departments where a um, lot of uh, uh, work has been initiated by government. So we may be now looking at B2B over coming uh, period of time. Right, so sir, in your presentation, you did mention about uh, the government schemes uh, with reference to the tap water availability at home and uh, and also, I think with the telecom duct part of the story, wherein the laying off of optic fiber cables uh, are, are laid to the uh, telecom duct pipe. So, this telecom duct is also a part of the building material uh, constituent on this? It's about industrial supplies. That is the segment we are, institutional sales or industrial supplies. This is where they are. Telecom duct is not part of building material. Okay. So, okay, sir. That from the industrial space, that the seg segment. That is right? right. And sir, you, you also mentioned that you are expecting a higher uh, sales from the value added segment. So, that is the ramp up which you are expecting in the building material that will contribute to yes. the value added part? Yes, that is building material. That is column pipes, which are also tied in a bore well in a building, what you put. So, all is that there. Okay. And so this selling part, this selling is through the 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 real estate people mainly uh, wherein they are the main buyers and we have uh, our uh, contract with them with, with the type of uh, construction or the uh, the real estate that they will be building up. That's how we, the selling uh, is planned. No, presently we are selling through our distribution network, which is the retail network. In every city, you have shops which buy products. Um, uh, uh, in different locations and territories. 
But now since we are completing our range, we will be also looking at supplies to building uh, builders and contractors who are into the building space. The product, uh, the, uh, building developers, you know. So now is the process that we will start. Okay, and and just lastly, two points that firstly, when we look at your consolidated numbers, wherein your uh, your debt number goes down. So if you could explain both at the stand uh, for the uh, I think so the current uh, the long term maturities I think so the long term debt goes down when the when we look at the consolidated numbers. So can you give us an understanding why uh, so why is that so in the uh, uh, in the balance sheet part? Uh, I would like to clarify that matter. We had one subsidiary under our company which is being consolidated. That subsidiary is under the process of closure. Uh, we had declared two years back. And uh, the name of the company was Kirti Auto and Engineering Limited. So that company had profits. Now, before, during the uh, course of merger, those profits have been uh, shown as borrowings in the holding company. So when the merger, uh, when the consolidated financials are prepared, those intercompany borrowings are eliminated. Therefore, the figure goes down from the long-term loans. Okay. So what is the current number, sir, for us for the company uh, and long-term borrowings? Uh, approximately nine crore rupees. Uh, come again, sir. Long-term borrowing rate. Nine rupees nine crore. Nine crore. And our short-term borrowing requirements are. Short-term borrowing requirements are approximately 200 crores. 200. And the blended cost of fund? Is running around uh, averaging to between 9.25 to 9.75. Okay. And sir, uh, so MD sir, you alluded to the fact that this year we are uh, we are anticipating an improvement in our margins uh, go going ahead for for this year and with with greater contribution from this <coughs> excuse me from the building material segment. This is what the sum and substance should be and on what we closed for the last year, uh, we can expect uh, uh, improvement in both the margin and the top end. Yes. Okay, but sir, what were the key reasons why we were we, we posted lower profits for Q4? What factors did affected our Q4 uh, numbers? You see, as uh, our sales in building products have to grow, we are doing a lot of groundwork in developing market advertising and promotion efforts. So our expenses are comparatively higher for the initial phase. Once the volumes get ramped up, automatically the expenses will be distributed on a higher base. And then we would be able to uh, get better margins overall. Can you give an annual number for the same sir, so that we will get an understanding how much extra money or the uh, promotion expenses or business development charges for the building material has gone into the PNL, which is not attributable to that segment. No, actually, building material we are we must be spell, uh, uh, spending a lot of uh, um, money on promotion for even a quarter. It may be more in excess to uh, three to four crores over normal expenses uh, which industry should provide or um, should. Uh, have a, as if uh, the sales to expense ratio. So our sales, uh, as they will grow, this uh, number will get um, you know absorbed on a much larger base, and then automatically the margins will improve. Right. And lastly, sir, agriculture is the is the biggest uh, pie in our case, and that is also on the vagaries of uh, the the nature and the monsoon. So, what are the risk mitigation strategies that that are in process? Or agriculture is the largest contributor to both the top line and bottom line. So, what's the ballpark going at two, three years down the line? Well, how is this mix likely to be? Uh, what are we emphasizing, sir? You see, agriculture is growing. I mean, building products may be growing faster than agriculture generally, but agriculture is still growing in India and growing reasonably. But agriculture, as you said, has uh, peaks and troughs because you have certain months where it doesn't sell much because of the, during rain, snow and food pipe, or after post harvest and during harvest there is a difference because while the crops are standing, it's difficult to lay a pipeline inside. So you have only uh, peripheral pipelines laid during that period. So there are 
peaks and troughs in agriculture and that is why a company has thought about getting into building material because same material uh, is mostly required other than CPGC which is for building product and we are able to utilize our plant much better throughout the year without much variation in seasonal changes. Right, and uh, sorry, sorry for my repetition, but when you mentioned about multi-locational plants going ahead, so what kind of capex is on the drawing board in terms of uh, the multi-location uh, part of the story? And when can we expect uh, we, we could hear something on the same? Any size or the uh, color you can give? Any plant will have to start with a minimum required uh, capacity, which would be about say uh, 20,000 tons around uh, annual capacity and as the market grows then you can keep, keep ramping up the capacity. So for a 20,000 around capacity plant uh, because it will have agriculture as well as building material pipes requirements. So there will be about capex of about 35-40 crores minimum to begin with which can subsequently can be scaled up. So no, not a big investment in that case. Not a so large This is a green field. Right. It is test. Correct. Thank you, sir, for uh, all the uh, answers and all the best. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Ladies and gentlemen, if you have any questions, please press star and one on your telephone keypad. Our next question comes from the line of Sampath Nayak from Tiger Assist Private Limited. Please go ahead, sir. Uh, hi, sir. So uh, my question is on you said on peak utilization, we realize 170 crore of revenue. So can I uh, can you tell me when can we uh, reach peak utilization? When do we aspire to go there? We grow quarter on quarter. By quarter four uh, in the current financial year. We should be inching towards um, uh, optimum utilization of the whole capacity we have. Okay, so all right. So, like by FI twenty five, we are planning to reach one seventy crore or close of revenue. Am I correct? For building material. Yeah. Yeah. So, so, so like soon we'll be hearing capex plans for the building material. Right. Because, okay, so like I just want to understand what is your you know uh, guidance in the especially in the building material for next three to four years. So I mean uh, like geography wise and revenue wise and margin. -wise. You see, once you reach more than two hundred crores in building material, your strengths are very different, and then you are looking at a very different capability. The growth rates could be very different your uh, ability to serve various types of uh, markets and customer profiles is much better. So till you reach 200, 250 crores is a different journey and thereafter it's a little different journey in terms of your abilities to expand. Okay, so I mean, so can we expect like 50% year on year growth for next three, four years in the building material? Building material, we should be showing uh, that kind of growth. Okay, and uh, like, will the margins improve as the revenue increases? Definitely, in because you know, the expenses will be distributed at a much larger base. So automatically, the inherent cost per unit will come down to give you more margins. Okay, okay. Thank you, sir, and all the best. Thank you, sir. Our next question comes from Hina Ora from Dam Capital Advisors. Please go ahead. Uh, hello. Yeah, hi. Thank you for the opportunity. Uh, so I would like to understand the three which are our key markets for agri uh, and what sort of contribution comes from each of these markets. Can you again repeat your question? You are not very clearly audible. Sure, sure, sure. So I was asking you, which are our core markets for agri sales and what sort of contribution comes from each of these markets? You see, our core market for agri is Central India, which includes 
and be Rajasthan, Maharashtra, and adjoining areas. Because our okay. periphery is defined by the distance. We are developing new markets, but that is where we are making extra provisions of and bearing extra freight costs as of now. Well, the reason I ask this question is from our channels, right? What we understand is demand has been quite robust from March. Uh, especially in Maladi said Rajasthan. Uh, even in Rajasthan, things have been quite good in April. So I just wanted to understand, uh, given that things are so good, why have we missed out and why are we on a 16% sort of uh, YOI growth for the fourth quarter? You see, rather than demand in Maharashtra was little down in the fourth quarter, so was okay. MP. But now things have improved in last, uh, I mean, uh, this current season. Because normally uh, April, May and June is a water which is quite aggressive for agriculture. So we are seeing a good Okay. 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 So, so, so what you're trying to say is this is fill over into the fourth quarter. Yeah, yeah. As to what sort of growth are we expecting for the first quarter? First quarter, we should show uh, in building material much better growth, but yes. for agriculture, yes. we would quickly be able to demonstrate uh, double digit growth. Uh, double digit bio growth? Uh, Q1, we are talking at the moment. Because post yes. monsoon, we'll have to wait for monsoon and what kind of. So okay. the forecasts are good, but let's see how we... No, no, uh, yeah, yeah, no, no, I meant uh, versus uh, first quarter of last year, right? So double digit yeah. growth versus the first quarter of last year. Yes. And, and uh, just another thing, sir, are we seeing a lot of competition uh, from our larger peers since they, uh, all of them have been cutting prices? And we've heard even on the PVC side, there are some players who are being quite aggressive. So, uh, somewhere have we lost market share to these players? No, presently we fortunately have a brand which is well, very well accepted by market and we are able to command the price in agriculture segment. Mm -hmm. So, we are commanding our price and premium and we are selling to our optimum um, abilities and capacities. Okay, okay, sure. So, sir, by, by peers, I meant the market leader, right? We heard that they've been quite aggressive. And okay. somewhere I read that they're saying that they have gained this uh, market share from the smaller players. So, which is this, which is why I was asking, in, you know, if there's some market share loss that we've seen in agri. No, so, agriculture, there will be always, uh, mm -hmm. players will always try to maximize their business. But we as a company to have a clear position okay. of the price and the market share and we have to balance okay. two things appropriately. Okay, sure. Thank you so much, Those are my questions. Thank you. Thank you, ma'am. We have a follow up question from Rahul Jain from Credence Wealth. Please go ahead, sir. Hello. Hello. Yes. Yes, yes, please speak. Uh, sorry, I'm a bit confused on this CAPEX side, sir. So, the first time when you announced a 30 crore CAPEX on building products, somewhere in the second half of FI22, uh, we mentioned right. that time that we are building up a CAPEX of 30 crore. And right. uh, probably from that CAPEX, we were planning to build a capacity which would be 50% higher. So right. my understanding was that at that point of time, that 30 crores capex would have yielded us for a ton, top line of about 150 crores. And in the current presentation, we have spoken that we have done a capex of 20 crores now. So basically, 30 plus 20, this is 50 crores total capex. So this right. 50 crores capex should result in a much higher sales, is my question, or is my understanding. So where am I going wrong, sir? Prices of material, if you see prevailing at that time and prices of material prevailing now, there is a reduction of about 35-40% in terms of the uh, raw material base price. Mm -hmm. So, if you look at tonnage wise, 
the these will offer higher tonnages, but the value wise, it will not result in the same values what was anticipated at that no. point in time. No, sir, I understand that. Sir, if I look at your quarter three presentation of FY22, that right. time also we had a building product capacity of roughly six thousand tons. Right. And then we started spending roughly thirty crores. Right. That is what we had planned to spend, thirty crores. Right. Yes. So when we speak now, so now the capacity is say nine thousand, ten thousand tons, somewhere between nine and ten, as what you mentioned right. to one of the previous participants. Right. Is it that we have spent thirty plus twenty fifty crores to go from right. six thousand to nine thousand? Yes, you see the uh, larger um, uh, sizes and uh, fittings entail a lot of when you expand your range. The actual capacity, uh, I mean the capacities will further grow when you add the more molding machines, other than the you know as the demand grows. So the same equipment can be utilized for a larger top line, while you have a smaller capacity. To uh, utilize the um, uh, moldings to a full extent, the uh, range, you know. So initially, you have to invest in a mold, which is a quite an expensive proposition, because same mold cannot be producing two fittings, but same molding machine can have two molds or three molds on it. Okay, sure. May I have to take so, the point? Got it. Yeah, to an extent, I have understood. So, sir, now as we speak today. Our current capacity after this 20 crores capex spent at today's price can give us yeah. somewhere around 160 to 170 crores of sales, correct? Absolutely, right. And then to go up to 250 crores or 300 crores, what additional capex will be required? It will be more on the machine side, the molding side. So there will be balancing. So the additional capex will be lower, much lower. Okay. Sure. Fair enough, sir. Um, thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you, sir. We have a follow-up question from Swanil Desai from Total Capital. Please go ahead, sir. Uh, sir, just one question. Uh, so, on the industrial side, I think our volumes have gone up sharply this year from ten thousand odd to seventeen thousand. So that's a quite a sharp jump, uh, and we are doing around 5,000 tons every quarter, kind of a number. So, uh, and I think uh, you are not too keen to grow that segment because of various uh, factors. So, shall we assume that it will grow at steady state, single digit number, or uh, you know, it is like project to project basis and can again come down from 17, 18,000 to again much number? How should we think about that? As I have been always saying, we have a limited exposure to this till the payments are in time or the government payments to the EPC contractors are intact, and we are assured of the payment cycle. We will continue supply. Like uh, we have scaled down a bit because of the election time. Already we are seeing there is a little difficulty in terms of uh, EPC contractors uh, continuing their business with Vega. So we will not. Extend. I don't see a major growth here. It will be more towards stable from these positions, and we will be be quite watchful and um, careful in exposing ourselves beyond a limit. Okay. So more of a flattish kind of a thing. That we expect on the. It will be flat. It's a flat. It will be flat. Okay. Got it. Thank you. That's it. Thank you. Thank you, sir. We have another follow-up question from Sampat Naik from Tiger Assets Private Limited. Please go ahead, sir. Hello. Yeah. So my question is: uh, to install additional set of capacities, what is the average timeline you require? As a new location, greenfield project or a non-greenfield project? Uh, no. Like what? Like are you planning downfield or greenfield? Oh, in the capacity expansion in the same location takes about three to four five months maximum. But if you go to a new location, it is about seven to eight months cycle. So, like, uh, are you planning for a brownfield or greenfield expansion? 
No, we may, we are I am completing over here and that we have to go multi location. So that's where I thought your question was. Yeah, yeah. So like I just want to understand because by FI twenty five we'll be utilizing our building material capacity, right? So for new set of revenues to kick in, like we would need additional capacity. And this, like do have we already planned the you know location or have we No, that's where I'm uh, looking at critical volumes. You see what happens in a uh, business you would always like to see when, which products you have a higher transportation cost and where you can afford a transportation cost so that you will go for efficiencies and economies based on um, overall supply chain cost and optimizing it. Okay. Okay. Hello. Yes. Yes, sir. Like, uh, like, I'm, like, I couldn't understand. No, you see, like, you know, there are certain voluminous products where the transportation cost is very high. But there are certain products which do, which is not voluminous. So you can centralize those productions and you can uh, distribute those productions which are to be decentralized. This is how it is. Okay. Uh, like, again, like, so like what I'm trying to say is like, even if we like, Focus on efficiency. You still need a capex, right? So what I'm trying yeah, to sir. understand is, see, like by F, for FI25, you said like you'll you'll achieve 170 crores, and say right. you know again 50 percent additional growth in FI26, and we still haven't uh, like uh, like I just want to understand how will we achieve that growth because there is no guidance on capex from your end. So that is just what I'm trying to understand. This is why I said going forward, we will have a mid-year review in terms of our ability to identify if we have reached critical volume and accordingly we shall plan so that by the year, next year we are ready with the requirement of the market. Okay, okay. Uh, all right, sir, all right. Thank you so much. Thank you, sir. We have a follow-up question from Saket Kapoor from Kapoor & Co. Please go ahead, sir. Yes, thank you. Again, uh, when we look at our fixed assets, sir, in terms of property, plant, and equipment, and the capital work in progress, that uh, totals to around 168 crores. Right. So, uh, on, on, on the capitalization of the entire uh, 13, 14 crore that is left, what kind of uh, uh, return, turnover ratio can we expect? Uh, 180 crore yes. you have already alluded to for, sorry, uh, 180 you have already alluded to uh, the building material. So, yes, at least. Last year we have done about 860 or 870 crores. Right. So if we look at a growth of about 20%, we should be close to about 1,050 crores next year. Okay, and this will include this 180 from building material, ramping up of the building material. Even in 866, it's included at the moment. Ha, 860 में क्या break up था sir building material का? Building material last year was about 200 and or 103, 104 crores. Okay, right. Sir. And sir, uh, for the debt number, uh, can can you please provide the long term debt once again? My line was the uh, so long term debt. So we have a long-term debt of approximately 43 crores as on date in the books. 43 crores. And so our current maturities? Out of this, the current maturities are to the tune of 13.5 crores. And so our current rating? Current what rating is our current? Triple B plus. Come again, sir. Sorry. Yeah, the current rating is triple B plus care. Okay, and they are rated by which agency? Care ratings. Care ratings. Thank you, sir. Uh, thank you for all the elaborate answer and all the best. Thank you. Thank you, sir. That was the last question for the day. Now I hand over the call to the management for closing remarks. Thank you, Indus, um, for the time and 
sparing our um, time for our call. Uh, we look forward to your support. Thank you very much. Thank you, members of the management. Ladies and gentlemen, on behalf of Ventura Securities, that concludes this conference. Thank you for joining us, and you may disconnect your lines now. Thank you so much.